Welcome to the FIDE Chess World Cup. Part one, we are going to look at an amazing attacking game by Peter Svidler, one of the best players in the world. The second part, we are going to look at two bonus tactics. You might be asking, why is he throwing in two tactics at the end? It's because there are just so many brilliant games in the World Cup. I still want to cover a few key tactical moments. First part, let's begin with this incredible attacking game. Peter Svidler is taking on Jordan Van Forest. We have e4, c5, the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, d6, and now d4, the open Sicilian. A capture happens. Knight f6, you attack the center. White defends, and now a6. We have the Sicilian Nidorf. Black controls the dark squares and the light squares, putting pressure in the center. Peter now plays one of the most aggressive setups, the bishop g5 variation. Pawn to e6, you control so many central squares. Queen to e2, putting indirect pressure against the king. Normally we go f4. Queen d2 is possible as well, but queen e2, he wanted to surprise his opponent. It's not the most common option. Bishop e7, getting ready to castle, and now h4. I believe I've had this type of position before in the British Championships. Sheffield, I think, 2011, against international master Richard Bates. And yeah, that game, oh my gosh, that did not go well. I lost very quickly. I wanted to surprise my opponent, but turns out my opponent understood this type of position better from the black side so I went down really quickly and it was a terrible terrible game but this is not a terrible game for Peter Svidler h6 you attack the bishop he drops it back I thought you would drop it back here nope bishop d2 don't play this move normal blunder oops we can all chuck a piece in one move you have to retreat to d2 or e3 I still don't understand why he didn't go there However, queen b6 attacks both, and Peter defends it with retreating the knight. Jordan now plays a really funny move. He goes h5. Why? Because he wants to stop Peter going g4. So you might go knight c6, Peter might castle, or you might go g4 now. This is actually so dangerous. You get in g5, trying to just break open the pawns. The pawn structure on the king side. So in this moment, Jordan took a move out to play h5. Now the problem with this move is you can't move pawns back. This square is now available for the bishop. Peter castles, queen c7, ready to go b5. Rook h3, very creative move. I mean, Peter played h4 many moves ago. You might as well put this to use. Get the rook in the game in a creative way. This is called a rook lift. Oh, wrong. Let's go back a little bit to this moment. Oops. Here. Rook to h3. Knight d7. Normal for the knights to defend each other in the Sicilian. Nidorf. Rook g3. Attack the pawn. Defends it. You can see in this structure... Lots of pawns on white squares. Now, the reason I don't love black's position is now the bishop goes back to g5. It would be ideal. It would be ideal if this pawn was back on h6 to defend. But uh, no, it isn't. Bishop goes back to its uh, spot. b5 ready to attack the knight. a3, you stop it. Rook b8 is possible. Something like this. Where black looks pretty good to me. So I'm a typical Nidorf counterplay. Bishop b7 was chosen by Jordan just to put pressure on this pawn. I mean, this was White's first move. This tends to be the target for Sicilian players. Queen back to e1, class move. You over-defend the knight with the pawn, the rook, and now the queen. This bishop can now join the game. Rook c8, normal move. Rook and queen on the c file, putting pressure in the Sicilian, the only thing I hate about Black's position is these pawns. I really want these pawns back a couple of squares. Why? This bishop is just too annoying for me. There's just so much pressure often. Bishop comes in the game to d3, ready to... You're over-defending, but maybe a pawn break f4, e5. That could be one way to progress. Nice e5 chosen. 
one way you could sidestep the king one way you might even go knight b6 then come in uh, knight e5 then come in that actually encourages f4 and then the knight can come to c4 one other option is actually to play d5 this move looks uh, uninviting because the queen is still facing the king indirectly but if we play a few captures if we play a few captures turns out there's nothing to worry about even though the king ugh, it just looks just looks scary but looks can be deceiving d5 was not chosen jordan played a normal move just get the knight in the game cool move by peter ignoring it why why can peter ignore this knight capture because after this capture typical way to reroute in the sicilian from the white side can you see the queen and rook belong on the c file for black turns out you can switch you can move your rook to the c file and then you can uh, gain some pressure there you can gain control of the c file as well let's go back a little bit if you go knight takes bishop you can actually take with the rook this is pretty cool the rook swings here you castle so the rook is here there's some pressure looks pretty nice looks pretty nice something like this where i mean everything everything is defended and you got some pressure this did not happen let's go back a little bit knight to c5 played king b1 castle and now capture happens gigantic moment in my opinion d takes c5 is a move i do not love why because the queen the queen and the rook are on the c file I would play this move without thinking because then the c file is still half open for my queen and rook f4 and then the game goes on pawn breaks are possible one two and then the fight has just begun let's go back a little bit jordan recaptures with the d pawn but this leads to some very forcing matters e5 you hit the knight it goes to the center one option was knight g4 Jordan might not have liked this option because after this capture, this knight looks like it doesn't have a good spot. Turns out it can go back to h6 and then come back in the game. That is not an easy reroute to see. You can invite the rook in. Now this rook looks amazing. It can't get attacked because you just get crushed. No, let's go back a few moves. Knight comes in the center. What could be more logical than offering a trade? But it turns out it turns out it's actually a bad move get rid of the dangerous knight this bishop looks amazing controlling lots of squares but there's a weak spot and that's exactly what peter capitalizes on you crash through in style along with the rook you've actually got a few attackers in the uh king side facing the king i mean bishop bishop rook time to sacrifice in style that's why i picked this game to discuss with you bishop takes pawn coming up i uh, get the queen in first c4 and now bishop takes pawn why capture take take and now rook takes pawn check this bishop it looks amazing but it's just uh, it's just a piece i mean who cares your king doesn't have any shelter if we go back a little bit this move is uh, based on psychology i don't like this move because you're just inviting the dude in he's going to sacrifice anyway why are you forcing your opponent to play the good move anyway one other option was king here but then something like this where we're going to use this pressure rook g5 is a cool move rook takes pawn check is now so dangerous so if you played a nothing move that is actually very dangerous you've actually won a pawn something like this now, if we go back a little bit, you might get out the way, but then you just blow open the king side. Something like this, you might go here straight away. You just blow it open. Queen defends the rook. Let's go back a little bit to this moment. Peter crashes through in style. Beautiful attack coming up. You, we're going to blow open the king. Get the bishops off because now the rook, the rook can come in with check. The king has no shelter check and now take the pawn there's no rush this bishop doesn't do anything rook is out the game queen is not going to help the queen is not going to help in the defense rook is going to go back to g5 with check and then it will be 
it should be over. Turns out Jordan resigned here, but let's just play on a little bit. Let's say Black plays a normal looking move like Rook H8, just trying to offer a trade. Turns out we get the Queen in with check. Check again. You can't go back or else you lose the Rook. The Rooks actually defend each other. If you go back, you go check. Now the King is actually cut off. So when I saw this position, just uh, checking it with the engine, I thought you just get the Queen here, Queen here. That is actually one winning attempt. Turns out there's a more beautiful attempt. This pawn guards the square and you can get rid of that defense with rook takes bishop. Why? Because if you take the rook, then check, king here, mate. You're down a rook, but who cares? You've just sacrificed in style. The king is surrounded. You know what? Even if you don't play this rook takes bishop, this rook sack, just sneak over with the queen. There's no way to stop it. If you go queen here, you go rook here. That's one cool way to just finish it off. Mate on the side. So that is an absolutely beautiful attacking game by Peter Svidlow, who takes the lead in his match against Jordan Van Forest. The video is not over. As promised at the start, so many games in the World Cup. Why not look at a couple more games just looking at the tactics near the end? Next game I want to talk about, it's just a final moment where, yeah, I mean, chess, chess is so harsh. So we have Dominguez against Gusinov, USA versus Azerbaijan. We have a check, a king to h6, I mean, rook g2 cuts it off. If we look at the material, it is totally level. Bishop for three pawns, and we have two rooks each. But chess is a very cruel game. The next move looks, uh, it just makes sense. You go rook f1, you want to hit the bishop. And if you play a normal move, this is the idea. At the highest level, this is actually a draw. This is actually a draw. Top players know how to defend rook and bishop versus rook. But chess is so cruel. I'll give you guys five seconds. You can pause the video now or just let the timer run. I'm going to show you guys anyway. There's actually a winning move here for white due to the fact the king is on the side. Five seconds. You want to checkmate the king on the side. The bishop needs to go to g8. Chess is cruel. You're already cutting off the king due to the first rook. What was the point of black moving the rook here? Is to offer a trade. But you don't trade. You just make the dude on the side. That's how cruel chess is. And I just want to show you this absolutely brilliant moment because chess is just so... It's just such a close game at the highest level. You want to stop this idea. You want to play the rook over here. You might be thinking, what is he talking about? What is William talking about? Just moving the rook to the side. Because if you play this move... Threatening rook h7 mate you play something called an x-ray defense that actually guards the square And that is a beautiful defense you, they might come off But then the bishop comes off and then we get this similar situation Those two pawns are probably gonna fall soon bishop and rook against a lone rook It is a draw at the highest level Another moment just want to mention here if you keep the rooks on well, that's the point that is actually the point where you just find a way to get the rooks off. And then we have the same situation. So that is such a tough loss for Gusinov. Now, final moment, final tactic I want to talk about is between one of the top players in the world, Fabiano Caruana. So we're going to take it from this spot. Caruana has built up a big position here on the left. Queen's now come off. We're going to hit the bishop, and it can retreat, but turns out his opponent, Mustafa Yilmaz from Turkey, went bishop e4. What could, be, what could possibly be wrong with this bishop move? I mean, it's just on a perfect central square. Turns out it should have been defending these pawns. So let's have a look. Rook c1, we put pressure, and here we go. This is the blunder from Fabiano Caruana. He is not going to be happy tonight. So you guys, yeah, same thing. 
pause the video now or just let the timer run. I'm going to show you anyway. You guys have five seconds. Can you find the winning combination for white? Caruana had plenty of time. He had 28 minutes on the clock. His opponent had three minutes. Can you see the winning move for white? Five seconds. We sacrifice in the game a6 was played which is a blunder this is a blunder why because yilmaz got the bishop back now we're still holding on to this pawn but this pawn drops the king hits the rook the rook has to move and then the pawn drops and later on later on both sides were just making lots of moves here the king is just so active white is up a pawn not anymore not anymore that pawn is not actually going anywhere. So some pressure on the bishop. You can find a way to capture. That's a pretty cool move. Bishop there. Find a way to uh, defend against back rank mate. Precise moves by Yilmaz. And then it was a draw. Well, let's go back to the point of this video. Just want to show you guys. Caruana missed. Rook takes pawn. This wins on the spot. Beautiful move. After capture. A6. Bear this rule in mind if this is new for you guys. If you've got two pawns on the six against the rook, the two pawns are too strong. That king, this dude is just too far away. This bishop is also too far away from the action. This is totally winning. You just attack the rook. You have to move it. You attack the rook again and then you get a queen. There was no way to stop these two dangerous pass pawns. So that's what Caruana missed. That's what I wanted to show you. A brilliant finish with this. So that is the point of this video. One brilliant attacking game by Peters Villa. Two tactics just to show you how difficult, just to show you how cruel chess can be. Welcome to the FIDE Chess World Cup. I'll see you later.